three, two, one. Boy, howdy, everybody. Shaney Mirrors Tier here with VR Chat Patch 2022.3.1. Yeah, we're a couple weeks late. There's there's a reason for that beyond just being, you know, procrastinating. Well, let's talk about it first. Uh, main menu 2.0 patch. Got a lot of brandy new features in the uh, in the main menu, and we're gonna talk about that. Oh my goodness. Got a lot of brandy new features in the main menu 2.0 patch, and a, a couple caveats, not ca not caveats, just like things that you see that just aren't complete. And, and we'll go over that real quick too. Uh, first off, uh, new launch pad menu. Let's, let's look at it real fast. All right, here are my hands. As always, beautiful hands. Let's open up the main menu. And first off, let me just tell you a little quick thing. When you're on the quick menu, not to be confused with anything. Else. All right, first off, naming convention right now, really, really bad. All right, so we're gonna open up the launch pad and then we're gonna double tap. If you double tap on the launch pad icon, it opens up the um, launch pad. So the launch pad opens up the launch pad. Anyway, so here we have the launch pad. Brandy new, very, very different than what we had. And I mean, let me, let me just talk about it real fast. Got news and stuff up here with information on, you know, your friends, your invites and stuff like that. Also the recent worlds that you've been to, as well as uh, recently updated favorite worlds and other stuff like that. They have wings, which we've had with a couple updates there including the world's wing we'll talk about that in a little bit um and a whole lot of new things in the bottom too we're going to talk about that as well all right so first off let's talk about the wings menus hit that up and we can just look at all the wings beautiful new explore wing to to learn about vr chat in case you didn't know anything about vr chat we've got the emojis in there now just like they always have been the world's wing is a little bit different and brand new actually this wing gives you quick access to your worlds like recent worlds uploaded worlds and your playlists stuff like that you can sort them all different ways like i like the active one active one's pretty cool because then you can go to like i don't know your favorited worlds that are currently active and see what the heck's going on there as you can see lunar planets is popular right now avatar testing is popular too so that's kind of fun Another fun one is going in and choosing recent worlds because when you do that, you get all your recent worlds and shows you how popular they are right now. Especially if you're like not really a bouncer between a whole bunch of different random worlds, but you have like a certain pile that you enjoy in general. Like here you go, that's that's exactly what we're looking at here. So world's wing, pretty cool, I like it. So another new thing on this menu is the world's menu. Now the world's menu has totally been changed. So first off, the new world's menu has this pile of stuff so no longer are you just scrolling endlessly through a list you actually have topics on the side including the new vr cats variety box which is a new page where it contains one random world from a set of categories so it's not just like a pile of random worlds they're actually organized in some kind of way and you can go in there and check them out it's actually kind of neat and if you don't like any of this list you can just hit the little refresh button on the top right here and it'll create a new list for you kind of fun i like it oh they got new search by the way so if we go over to the worlds tab and we hit up the little search here not only can you enter a search term but you also have these default terms that you can take a look at and very quickly and easily does it bring up the results so this is pretty nice it's so far it's not what avatar people have been looking for for an easy way to search for avatars like the old mod did but this is definitely showing progress in that direction so i'm pretty excited they've also updated the avatars menu so you can go to recently used which is really nice because if you're somebody who uses a lot of uh, avatar pedestals all those avatar pedestals or at least you know, the last 12 that you used um, will be available in the recently used section unless, you know, the owner has changed it to private or something like that. And they also have these topics, which is kind of fun. So better organization uh, in general in the avatars and worlds tabs. However, you will have to start learning a couple new things with the UI because uh, it's not very intuitive as far as the transition. We'll talk about that in a little bit. They've also changed the avatar details to add a whole lot of new things as far as, you know, what is going on in here. So let me just choose one, for example. Let's choose my robot dog white model. We'll go view avatar details here. And you'll see 
Now, very, very prominently, the features that the avatar has, for example, not quest compatible, uh, what SDK it's on, uh, older avatars will have SDK 2.0. Do the eyes actually look around or are they static? Like, is that configured? Does it have, does it have visemes on it? And then it goes into the performance breakdown. So really, this gives you a lot more information in a rather nice interface, which I'm very appreciative of. Meanwhile, if we choose Elena V3 sample or whatever here, we'll see this avatar, not so good, but it is also, it also has the same features as my other avatar, but we can see where the problems are pretty prominently without even having to put it on. And now the kind of most, um, how should I say this, least polished part of the interface is the settings menu. Now, there's nothing wrong with the actual polish of this. It looks really nice, very clean, uh, even has, uh, if you have VRC+, Plus, a whole bunch of different options for the backgrounds that you can uh, choose. And as you can see, if you move the mouse around or you move your hand around, the background changes a little bit, which is kind of nice. But the issue here is that the settings, the big settings menu, which we have right here, does not have all the settings in it. And I'll talk to you about that. You know what, let's talk about right now. For example, if I wanna turn on, you know, the mirror to configure my trackers, um, you would think it would be in tracking in IK, but it's not. To do that, you have to open up the quick menu, go into options, choose personal mirror, go to settings, and then choose calibration mirror and turn that on. Now, why is it here? The answer is I don't know, but the bigger question is also, I believe you can double tap. You can double tap on the tiny launch pad settings to open up the big settings. So that's kind of cool too. It's a, it's a little quality of life right there, um, but it's not here and it's not anywhere in here. It's only on the quick menu, on the quick radial menu. And that is bad user interface right there. You would think that it would be available in tracking in IK. And this isn't the only thing that is not in the right place. This settings menu is completely different from this settings menu. And in many retrospects has totally different options in it. And if you're looking for something specific, you now have one, two, three different locations to actually find the thing that you're looking for in a, a, as a setting. And this does not fly with me as somebody who likes pleasant user experiences. Something needs to be done to tie everything into one usable menu and then branch all of those things from that one usable menu to other usable menus that are easier to access. You should find everything that you need on the big menu, especially with all of these options. Anyway, all right, so uh, let's talk a little bit about some other features that they've done for this patch. They've implemented avatar haptics. Now this feature allows users to get haptic feedback, aka controller vibrations, uh, when you touch other avatars. Now, this relies completely on the avatar dynamics framework and permissions. So both users have to opt in before haptics will work for either of them. Uh, for most cases, most people have, and I'll show you, most people have avatar interactions on for everyone or at least friends. So as long as people are actively letting you use avatar interactions, they're going to receive haptics when they touch you if they have it turned on. And hold on, let me change the settings because it's not here. So we can go into accessibility and turn on avatar touch haptics and you can choose a strength, you can choose a sensitivity of that. Um, you don't need it at 100% strength, I find. Um, a, a lower in the 30s number is, is the right amount of uh, touch strength, so it doesn't drain your battery as heavily. A lot of vibrations in those motors definitely brings down the battery life, so just keep that in mind when you're turning that on. Another pretty neat feature is that they added portal placement. So when you open up a world and you choose drop portal, now you have the option of placing the portal anywhere you want. And in fact, I can move myself around and continue to choose where I want to put the portal, which is pretty stinking cool. So we're gonna press B to cancel because I don't need to place the portal, but that's how you place portals now, which is pretty awesome. And if you want to change that setting, like say you actually liked the old way that the portals were placed, where you just run up to a location, you place the portal. 
That's in comfort and safety. Portal mode. You can choose between portal placement or regular old fashioned portal drop. So that's how that works. A lot of this video was going to be pointing out where stuff is in the settings menu because it's not, excuse me, it's not intuitive. It's not intuitive at all, which is something that VRChat is going to have to look at and improve upon because a lot of these things are just not where you would think they would be. You would think that portal placement might be a user interface kind of thing because that's, you know, but it's not, it's not in user interfaces. <laughs> Whew, okay. They've also implemented visual adjustment options such as color blindness filters. And let me show you where that is. So here we are in, in handheld settings, right? If we go down to color filters and we enable it, we can go down and see filters here. If we go down and choose tryptanopia, which is the blue yellow filter, we can see, especially if we simulate color blindness, this is what somebody roughly simulated with tryptanopia would see. And we can also apply this to the world. Of course, you can't see when I apply it to the world, but it's very gray. So you can get an idea of if somebody can see the stuff in your world, like say you have a user interface thing with text on it, and you're not sure if they can actually, it, you're not sure if everybody can see it. So what you're going to do is turn this mode on and take a look and see if you can see it. And if you can see it, you have a higher likelihood that the person with tryptanopia will also be able to see it. So simulating color blindness is actually kind of neat and you can actually see the, the colors and how they uh, absolutely not the colors that most people see. So yeah, kind of neat. Uh, so what else do we got? Oh yeah, they've added some optional full body tracking calibration visualizations uh, that users can toggle to help calibrate full body tracking. Like, let me let me show you what I'm talking about for a quick second here. We're doing a lot of this jumping back and forth, so I apologize. It's in the small menu. And as you can see here, we have, we'll be, we're able to turn the visuals on and off. We still have the, uh, the balls that you can see here, but if we change, if we turn the visuals on and we change the tracker here, see now it's the system tracker. So it shows you what the trackers actually look like and where they're positioned on the body. You also have boxes. So you can see different colors on different sides of the boxes. So you can get a good idea of which direction things are in. They also have axes, which is an extended version of boxes. And they all have different colors on each side. And then we're back to spheres again. So those are your options. And now you can see in the calibration menu, they got these green circles too, which shows you how far from the center the tracker is. So anyway, and you can see that they turn off sometimes if they are too far away to be properly tracked. So here, let's set this back up again. And there we go. Easy as that. They have also added a new personal mirror option so you can actually have it stick to your head so it'll head track you. I'll show you that real quick too. So from the quick menu this time, options, personal mirror. First, you gotta turn on the mirror, high mirror. And then we're gonna go over to tracking and then you can choose head. And now it's attached to my head. It is now a head tracking mirror. Congratulations. We're gonna set that back to world because actually we'll do play space. There we go. Where is everything? The answer is it's everywhere and nowhere at the same time. All right, hi mirror, let's, let's get you out of the way. All right, options, options everywhere. If only they were in one place. So another thing that you can do, as you saw from when I was placing portals down and stuff like that, I have earmuff mode on because earmuff mode is the best thing since sliced bread. But you can turn it off really easily. You can do it by opening up the hand menu, the hand launch pad menu, and you can either just turn it off right on top or you can double tap the audio. And as you saw, it just disappeared the user interface from the bottom because we don't have earmuff mode on anymore. But now if we double tap again, there it is. Pretty, this is quick and fast and painless and really nice. It's really, that's really a good feature. Like all these double taps, nice job, whoever thought of that because that's a really smooth way to do things. Now, just as an aside uh, with the big menu, you have this little lock icon on the side, which essentially just stops you from moving the, uh, the stuff around. So if you're in a happy place with the lock, just lock it up and you're good to go. So there's also now a Avatars 3.0 synced Boolean parameter called earmuffs, which is especially 
important for people who are creating worlds because it'll tell you if people have earmuffs on or not. Hello. Stay with me, will ya? And then you can set up a system to work with them in a more accessible manner. They've also added an unmute sound for your microphone. So when you turn on mute, which by the way, easily configurable on controllers, just gotta push a button, which is something we'll talk about in the settings menu in a second. Um, but now they have a sound so you don't accidentally unmute or when you do accidentally unmute, you can actually hear it and you realize it. They've also added new launch options specifically for AMD processors, for there is kind of like a bug, some, something going on with AMD processors, where since they have so many cores and so many threads and stuff like that, like some of these like Epic processors, the EPYC, not EPIC, we don't, we don't talk about Epic, but the Epic processors can have like 64 cores and 128 threads, just ridiculous stuff. And at that point, management gets a little funky with VR chat and potentially other games, but especially for VR chat. So they've created a launch option to limit how many threads that VR chat can use, which brings down the management to something, um, wow, something manageable. And that launch, mat, uh, that launch option is dash dash affinity equals, and then the argument. So, and and it's not an easy argument to, to put in either um, because the arg, the, 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 the dash dash affinity equals argument, the argument in that command uh, is a bit mask indicating which thread should be utilized for VR chat. And it's in hexadecimal. So if you use FFFF, so bit affinity, uh, sorry, dash dash affinity equals FFFF, that means 16, because as we all know uh, from, I don't know, math class or whatever, hexadecimal, four Fs in hex hexadecimal is 16. So that'll limit VR chat to 16 threads. Or if you do dash, uh, if you just do FF, that's eight, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. One of my problems with this command is that they don't really provide a link to teach you about what inter CCX latency is and why that is a problem specifically for AMD processors and possibly your problem as far as your performance loss. Um, in fact, I might turn this on because I'm starting to have a little bit of weird stuff going on in my system and it could be from inter CCX latency. But uh, yeah, there's a link on vrchat.com's docs to Bitsum's CPU affinity calculator so you can figure out what the correct number, or in, in this case, hex code is for your processor. They've added a new height adjustment system in the settings menu that I'm gonna show you now. It, they call it the user real height adjustment, which essentially measures from what VRChat considers the floor in your play space and calculates up to where the HMD is I guess give it give or take another couple inches. Let me show you where that is. It's useful if A, you don't know what your height is, and B, if, all right, first off, it's not here. You're not gonna find it here because why would you find it here? It's in the big settings menu, dingus. And this is useful if you don't actually know how tall you are, but let's be honest, you should probably know how tall you are. And here it is in tracking in IK, your user real height, uh, but right here is the button that will uh, set your real height based on your headsets standing position. Um, and then you can adjust it up or down uh, depending on where it actually is. Um, there's a lot of stuff hidden in this these menus and they're nowhere else. And it's really, like I said, it was, it's really complicated. And I'm kind of saddened that it's turned out this way for a, for a 1.0 release for the, for the 2.0 system. But anyway, you can finally turn off bloom if you don't want bloom. I think I'll turn that off actually. Here's the color filters again. This is one of those things that actually is in two places, two different setting sections. So again, color blindness, color blindness mode, and all of those settings are right here. Here's a brand new one, controls. Controls is essentially what you would find in Steam VR to do manual changing of what the controls do in VR chat. Um, but this is an interface where you can follow along a little bit easier. In fact, when you mouse over stuff, it actually points it out as a nice little tool tip, which is kind of nice. And you can turn on uh, push to mute. You can do all sorts of things with, uh, with the control system. So I highly suggest now 
that if you used Steam VR to make these kind of changes to first not use this because it's not going to work for you, uh, it'll actually break very, very badly. So, so first reset the controls in Steam VR before you go ahead and bother with this. But once you do that, you can make the changes that you had previously in here and easily change it in the future that without having to leave VR chat. So that's kind of nice. Also keep in mind that the HUD has changed pretty severely now. Uh, so we have new HUD options here, uh, verbose, minimal, and off. Uh, verbose shows notifications as pop-ups on the bottom where minimal only shows icons. So I have verbose on and I can see when my friends join and leave instances on the bottom. It's really not that obtrusive. So I highly suggest using Verbose. It's uh, kind of nice. Notification audios, you can turn those on and off now, which is kind of nice. Not sure what HUD smoothing does. I do not see a difference when I turn it on and off. You can change the opacity of the like microphone icon and stuff like that on the bottom left. Like mic opacity is specific. Yeah, so you can turn it down and even greater get it out of the way which is very nice everything is in where it should be in most cases uh, the only problem is where they are in which settings section and i keep saying this but it really drives me nuts when you're looking for something and there's three different locations that you should be looking it just that's not the way to make a user interface and yeah you can go through the rest of these there's the it, it's it's essentially what you think they would be comfort and safety and audio and voice. Essentially, they just copy and pasted the old version and made it into the new UI. So pretty straightforward there. My goodness, all right, what else is there? They improved the face mirror to improve the resolution a little bit. It's not as pixely anymore. And uh, the clamping is a lot tighter and feels a lot more correct. So good job on that one. Personal mirror changed very slightly. So if it's way above or way below the user, the placement was better. Don't even know what that means. Name plates and the chat box now actually face the right way if you're looking in a mirror. And a whole bunch of other little fixes to loading into worlds, quick menu master audio actually being able to go 125% now, uh, lots of little fixes to the keyboard, some tracker configurations for causing crashing so they improve that a little bit, text rendering looks much better. And there's one change in the SDK, which is essentially shader globals that can be accessed by any avatar or world shader. Um, but really that's something more for Valgen uh, I'm not going to get into that. It's, uh, it's a bit above my head. <sighs> yeah. Um, as you can see, settings are kind of a mess. <laughs> but we're not going to get into that anymore. Um, open beta right now in VR chat. Um, new network changes. So obviously should not be compatible with live. But network changes are always generally a positive thing nowadays. Um, and I'm excited to see what it actually is. Because boy howdy, I have not had any time. To, to do any of that but this is shaney Merst here <laughs> thank you for listening to my drivel for the last hour half hour 20 minutes i don't even know how long this video is going to be but tune in next time um i'm going to actually do some more reading on some of the new dev diaries and uh see what they had to say um and regurgitate it to you so uh uh, expect that it should be fun actually because dev diaries are usually enjoyable so anyway this has been shaney mirrors here i'll see y'all next time don't forget to subscribe we got 200 new subscribers since the uh, 2000 subscriber extravaganza and i really would not mind if you were one of them take care everybody peace ow i whacked myself in the face